Welcome. Thank you for purchasing this course. This is your first session, Introduction to English Language GCSE. So how does it work? Well, you can work through the videos one by one in order, or you can dip in and out according to what you need more support with. You'll be given key information, important learning points, quizzes, polls, sample answers. The list really goes on and on. Basically, the aim is to help you be a successful GCSE English language student, regardless of the examination syllabus you are studying. So what is English language? It's easy, right? We speak it, we write it, but for GCSE it's a bit more. It's the reading and writing of different texts, both fiction and non-fiction, from story extracts through to historical text from the 19th century. You might be given the task of reading or writing a speech, or perhaps a letter or a leaflet. You need to really know your text quite well. What do you have to do? Well, you need to read and analyse different texts, thinking about language, structure and ideas. You might be asked to compare two depending on your examination. Knowing about how texts work will be useful too, for example, understanding different terms, and I don't mean just adjectives, and why a text has been written. Remember audience, purpose, form, language. These will be familiar terms. How will I be assessed? Well, there are different assessment objectives, or AOs, that are important, but they're not assessed on every question, so let's go through these. For reading, we've got AO1. This is about how you select information and make sense of it, whether it's obvious in a text or not. For AO2, here you need to explain, comment on, and analyse language and structure and use those techniques you know so well. For AO3, don't despair, this is compare. This means looking at writers' ideas to see how they are similar or different. AO4, evaluate. You might be given an idea to discuss to see how far you agree or disagree with it. And for writing, we have two assessment objectives. AO5, the way you communicate based on tone, style and content. Often people think this as the what, what you write. And AO6, spelling, punctuation and grammar, or SPAG, the nuts and bolts of your writing, and if you like, the how. OK, so what might questions be like then? Well, you might be asked to identify keywords or ideas, or perhaps figure out which points are true out of a list. Some questions will ask you about a section of a text. Others might focus on the whole extract. Just make sure that you read questions carefully to check what you're expected to do. You could be asked to summarise a text or compare two different texts. When it comes to writing, remember to plan. Think about your audience and your purpose the form and the language you're expected to use. It's really, really important. Spelling and grammar, really important too, particularly on your writing questions. So always check your work carefully, looking for common mistakes. Their house is big, not there. She shouldn't be doing that. Not shouldn't, sounds the same, spelled incorrectly. And an old favourite, I before E except after C, so receive, but retrieve. You get the idea, and more of this in a later session. What can you remember so far then? Let's have a go at a true or false quiz. There's no need to write this down unless you want to, but do pause the video and think about your answers. And if you're really stuck, you've got a 50-50 chance of getting it right. Number one, you will need to write in detail about an author's life in English language. Is that true or false? Well, the answer is false. You don't need to write in detail about an author's life. That would come in more under English literature. Number two, reading and writing skills are tested in English language. Is that true or false? 
Well, the answer to this one is true because reading skills are assessed on section A and writing on section B. So you need to be pretty clued up on both of those things, reading and writing. Number three, it is important to understand different techniques, not to just identify them, but to write about and use them. Is that true or false? Well, the answer to that one is definitely true. Show your understanding of them, but remember, don't just listen. It's what the effect is that's important, why they're used. Number four, Shakespeare is the main text for your English language examination. Is that true or false? Well, here, that would be false. Shakespeare, in terms of the play you would study, would come up on English literature, not English language. Number five, fiction and non-fiction text will likely be important. Is that true or false? Well, the answer here would be true. Because depending on your exam and your exam syllabus, you're likely to be writing about fiction text and non-fiction text as well. The main difference between fiction and non-fiction is the length, with fiction being longer than non-fiction. Is that true or false? Well, hopefully you realise here the answer is false. Whether it's fiction or non-fiction has nothing to do with the length of the text. And finally, writing about as many different techniques as possible is essential. Is that true or false? Well, the answer here is false. It isn't a competition to see how many techniques you can write about. Now, the accompanying resource for this session is going to be very useful to put your skills into practice. I'm going to talk you through it. You can then go away and work on it in your own time and when it suits. And this is the text that I'd like you to think about. Shrimpton Bay, a world away. Come to Shrimpton Bay and experience the best beaches of Britain's best kept secret. The beauty of Shrimpton Bay will, you might have guessed, blow you away. Situated on the east coast of the country, it has a picture-perfect town centre full of gorgeous restaurants and tempting shops, something to suit all tastes and budgets. For the children, there are many fun things to do, from the merry-go-round to good old-fashioned crabbing. Just grab a bucket and go. And if this isn't up your street, you could hire a scooter and whiz around the windy lanes, or enjoy some classic films at the outdoor cinema. Just hope for good weather. Shrimpton Bay is an ideal destination if you want to slow down, rest up and step back in time. You don't need a passport and there's no plane travel involved. You can hop on the train or pile the kids into the car. It's how holidays should be. Now this is not an exam question, but it's intended to help you practice your reading skills. So you will see there are some downloadable questions for you to answer and in the pack there are some suggested answers as well to those. I'm going to go through them with you. Number one, what is the purpose of the Shrimpton Bay text? How do we know this? Number two, what is the reason the text uses direct address you throughout? Number three, Find three examples of verbs and explain their effect. There are lots of examples. Four, Shrimpton Bay is on the northeast coast of Britain. True or false? Five, in paragraph one, there is an example of a metaphor. What is it? And finally, number six, what is the tone of the piece? So you've made it. Your first lesson on your way to being a successful GCSE English language student. Well done.